I'm giving somebody the blues today. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. Today, I want to talk about why I dislike the second generation, the daughter of Kunimitsu, so much. I know I touch on it here and there in many different videos where I talk about maybe gameplay, I'll touch on it a little bit, story, I'll talk about it a little bit. But what I want to do is dedicate a whole entire video to why I dislike her so much. Because this is something I see a lot in the comments. People say, oh wow, you really hate Kunimitsu. Why do you hate her so much? You know, I did a video just the, the other day where I was talking about designs and I put the daughter's Kunimitsu at the very, very bottom of that tier list. Meanwhile, I put the mother's at the very, very top of that tier list. So I just want to go a little bit deeper. I usually don't take notes i usually just spit fire whatever's off the top of my head but for this video i really want to take notes and i really wanted to be precise with what i say and make sure i explain it right so we're going to break this video up into four sections the first section i'll start chapter one the mother now kunimitsu's story is kind of simple in tekken 2 her first mistake she originally went after Michelle Chang's necklace. That is Julia Chang's mother. She went after her necklace and tried to steal it. Now, that is against Maji clan's rules. They steal from the rich and give to the poor. But she was trying to steal from, you know, a normal person just for the sake of greed, just for the sake of I want that necklace. And I'm not sure if the necklace had any value if it was like some spiritual amulet or whatever but Kunimitsu tried to take it Michelle caught her and beat her up beat her down and that was Kunimitsu's first devastating loss now there was a second part in there her second mistake and this was by far the most fatal she had a grandfather who was a swordsmith and Kunimitsu and grandfather plotted to take Yoshimitsu's sword for those of you who don't know Yoshimitsu's sword is also named Yoshimitsu and Yoshimitsu's sword has special abilities when it cuts a enemy it does not cut you you are not getting sliced but when it hits you it hits your soul and it slices your soul so that is very powerful so Kunimitsu and Kunimitsu's grandfather conspired to steal that from Yoshimitsu now of course that did not work her plan went left Yoshimitsu um, probably beat her up, probably dogged on her, and then banished her. And the original Kunimitsu was never seen ever again. And you could make the argument, the reason why I think she was not killed that day. One, Yoshimitsu is a good guy. And two, banishing someone, banishing like a ninja, a samurai, uh, that is like very shameful. If we go back 200 years, 300 years, back to like, you know, the samurai days in Japan, when someone banished you, they left you to walk the earth in shame, right? That was a very, very uh, dishonorable thing, right? Because I know people say Yoshimitsu isn't a samurai, but he is. Uh, ninjas and samurais, if you go back and do the research, they really are one and the same. It's just the status different. But samurais are supposed to die in battle. They're supposed to die honorable deaths. But when you leave someone to walk the world in shame, it's just a horrible thing. A horrible thing, right? Now, chapter two, The Banish. 20 years, the original Kunimitsu was missing. Now, I remember being a kid wondering what happened to her. There was rumors and things about her working in a laundry shop. Now she got a real job and she's like trying to, uh, you know, just make the best of what she has left in life. And I think that is what ended up happening with her. She, you know, had to start a new life and she had to sort of move past the suffering that she uh, was dealt by Yoshimitsu. When they announced Kunimitsu for season four, at the end of the season four reveal trailer, they had the samurai standing on top of the temple. I was so happy because one, I knew that was the Maji clan's temple she was standing on. I knew that was Yoshimitsu's home. Like in that exact temple is where the original Yoshimitsu was like born. So I knew that was Kunimitsu and I was so excited to see what she was going to do after 20 years. 20 years of being banished, of being exiled. My whole thing is that 
for you to be out that long, when you finally do return, you are going to one, be very powerful. I've been practicing for 20 years to get my revenge. Two, you are going to be very, very vengeful, right? You want revenge for everything you suffered in those 20 years, right? I have to regain my honor. For those of you who watch Avatar The Last Airbender, you guys know how important honor is. I compare the original Kurima 2 and Zuko, regaining your honor and trying to, you know, make amends for the wrongs in the past. But when it's revealed, it's the daughter. Now that was a huge blow to me. I was very let down when they sh said it was a daughter. And that was for two reasons. One, I wanted to see the old Kunimitsu, the original Kunimitsu. I thought it would have been so sick to have, you know, cause the original Kunimitsu had all red hair. I thought it would be really cool to see the red hair, but also now she has a lot of gray mixed in and she's like, kind of like older. She, she's more mature. She's not like a little child trying to steal necklaces. She's a full blown ninja master. That is what I wanted to see. I want to see her, you know, in her glory days, but they didn't go that route. They gave us the daughter. Now the daughter's story, the daughter is a, basically she do, she does assignments for the Mishima Zaibatsu. The Mishima Zaibatsu sends her all around the world doing these assignments and you know, her, her story is very generic. And the reason why she goes after Yoshimitsu in Tekken 7 is because her mother, the original Kunimitsu, is dying of a illness. The daughter Kunimitsu wants to make the original Kunimitsu happy, right? Her final days of living, she wants to do what she can to make her happy. And she's like, what was your biggest mistake that you never ever got to resolve? And then of course, the original Kunimitsu tells the daughter about Yoshimitsu and the sword Yoshimitsu. Now, the daughter Kunimitsu sets her sights on Yoshimitsu. But this is where the biggest flaw in the story is. Once she hears the story of what Yoshimitsu did to the mother Yoshimitsu, her whole mindset should be vengeance. Her whole mindset should be revenge. But when she shows up in the trailer to confront Yoshimitsu, she's not trying to get revenge. She's not trying to, you know, get reclaim the honor of her mother or anything. She solely shows up for the sword. Now, I get it that the original Kunimitsu wanted the sword. The mother wanted the sword, but the, the mother paid a very hefty price for trying to get it, right? 20 years of being banished. And that really adds a whole new element to it. Chapter three, the daughter. Her personality is very childlike. And this is something that we have a lot of in Tekken 7. Alyssa, Josie, Zhao Yu, Lily, Asuka, um, so many female characters in Tekken 7 uh, are children and behave like children. And when they did that to Kunimitsu, I was very disappointed because there's only a few women in the game who don't behave like children, right? You had the original Kunimitsu, you had Jun Kazama, you have Julia, I would say Anna and Nina, but other than that, all the other female characters are children. And for them to change one of the most iconic and serious female characters with, with like such a serious story, for them to change that to a, a joke, it, it really hurts to the core. Because I remember when I was a child thinking about the continuation of her story. When she do finally make a return, what will her actions be? And for them to just get rid of all of that, just for the sake of making the character younger. This is the main reason why I dislike them. Dislike the daughter, because I know the developers made the daughter the daughter because they have a hatred for older women. In the Japanese culture, if you're over 22, 23, you're considered old, ancient, and washed up. And I think that is not true. I think that is not real. And Tekken 7 has suffered so much because of that. Um, it really has. But the final chapter of this video. Chapter 4. The Revamp. 
I always talk about revamp because the community, they say revamp, but they really don't really explain what revamp mean, right? People say, oh, add in Bruce with a revamp play style. Add in Christine with a revamp fighting style. But one, I don't really understand what the word revamp is, uh, what it means to you guys. Um, the only true example I have when I hear people say revamp, I think of Kunimitsu. The original Kunimitsu in Tekken Attack Tournament 2 was one of my most favorite characters in the game. Yoshimitsu, Dragnov is in with the original Kunimitsu, Brian Fury is in with Bob. Those five characters in that order was my most favorite characters in that game. And I really love the fighting style and gameplay of the original Kunimitsu. So I was excited, very excited when they announced it for Tekken 7. But I was immediately disappointed when they changed a lot of her abilities, a lot of her moves. Um, some of her key things that I like personally, I get this as a personal thing with me, but her things that, you know, the teleporting and, you know, just the way she fought in Tekken Tag Tournament 2 is really, really gone and thrown out the window in Tekken 7. In Tekken 7, she truly is a different character. Even some of her moves that are copy and paste from Tekken Tag Tournament 2, one, it is changed to where now it may have a guaranteed follow-up. Two, it's changed to where it leads into some broken Oki that didn't exist before. Um, they really changed the 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 freedom of the character. I think to Yoshimitsu, Yoshimitsu and Kunimitsu really go hand in hand in Tekken Tag Tournament 2. Yoshimitsu is a kind of party character, do like, you know, move with the wind, fight freely. And Kunimitsu was the same, you know, she was a very do what you want kind of character. But in Tekken 7, everything with her is flowcharts. Everything with the daughter Kunimitsu is flowcharts. Do this hell sweep for a guaranteed follow up. Do this move for this follow up. Like, everything is so planned out, and you really just have to follow the developer's guidelines in order to win. When in the past, it was not like that. It, everything was not so laid out. There was not guaranteed follow-ups. You know, do this and then do this and then do this and your opponent will die regardless. That's, I get that's the way that they're making these characters now, but that's not how Kunimitsu was back then. And I don't accept it, you know. Um, I know this was like a long video and I went kind of in many directions, but this is all why I do not like the new Kunimitsu and why I favored the old. This is why I talk so badly about the daughter because like I said, to make it short, a short recap, you have the mother's story falling to the dark side, giving in to greed, trying to steal and at biting her back twice. Julia fights her, Yoshimitsu fights her, exiles. She gets banished for 20 years to work in a laundry shop and starts a new life. The daughter shows up, the daughter shows up and she doesn't even want revenge. She doesn't even want to gain the honor of her mother. Solely shows up to steal the sword of the mother and that is just a joke because it's more than just the sword at this point. The sword is just what started it but there's so much more that happened after that the daughter is ignoring. And then the final part, the gameplay. The gameplay is just completely changed and it does not resemble what I knew in Tekken Attack Tournament 2. And, you know, they really changed. And I get everyone likes this character, right? If you didn't play Kunimitsu in Tekken Attack Tournament 2, you probably love the Tekken 7 version because it's so easy. It's so flowcharty, you know, do this, do this, do this, do this, and the opponent will die. In the original game, it was not like that. But... That is it. That is pretty much my entire reason for disliking the new Kunimitsu and favoring the old. That is it. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.